Hello everyone. My name is Nirjana Banikya and today we will be discussing about the topic FIR. So to make it easy I have jotted down some very basic points of FIR which I will be sharing with you. Now what is FIR? FIR stands for First Information Report. Well interestingly FIR is not defined anywhere in the Criminal Procedure Code 1973. FIR means and includes the following. It is the information which is first in point of time. It is the information which is related to cognizable offence. Now what is cognizable offence? Cognizable offence means an offence in which the police can arrest a person without a warrant. And the fourth point is that it is the information on the basis of which the police will start the investigation. Now let us discuss about a very interesting topic which is called zero FIR. So generally what happens that a FIR must be filed in a police station having jurisdiction. But in exceptional cases or in cases where the, the people cannot file the cases in the police station having jurisdiction, the people can also file these cases in other, other police station. So this is called zero FIR. The zero FIR will be transferred to the police station having jurisdiction. So now comes the importance of the main objective of FIR. So why do we need FIR? FIR is needed or it is important to gain early information as soon as possible. This information or this early information helps in preventing the fabrication of false evidence. Now let us discuss about the evidentiary value of FIR. So for that we need to learn these two words. The meaning of these two words. Number one is corroboration and number two is contradiction. So corroboration means to support or support. And contradiction means against. So the FIR can be used either for corroboration or for contradiction. Now let us discuss about section 154 information in cognizable case which is the last topic for today and which is very important. Number one, every information in a cognizable case must be in written form. If the information is provided orally, then the police officer will have to record it in written form. The police officer will read the information to the informant and if the informant is satisfied, then the informant will put his signature. The police officer will record the substance of the information in the general diary or the GD. If the police officer refuses to take the information and uh, without any valid reason then what can be done is that it can be sent by post to the superintendent of police or the SP. If the superintendent of police is satisfied then he will conduct an investigation by himself or by any subordinate officer and this subordinate officer will have all the powers of the officer in charge or OC. Well, there is a very commonly asked question that is, is a delay in filing the FIR leads to dismiss in the case? In court of Punjab versus Sanjeev Kumar and others, 1997 CRLJ, the court held that there won't be any dismiss in the case because of the delay of the filing of the FIR because there was valid reason for the delay. For more such videos on legal topics, stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. Let's skip. And with this, I would like to end today's discussion of FIR. Thank you so much for watching.